This is the Time Baby Tales. I'm your host, Shannon Evans. I write about a small town in Northeast Mississippi called Columbus. And sometimes I write about the rest of the state. This episode is about the ghost of Henry Betts, a man who was possibly wrongfully convicted and hanged at the Lowndes County Courthouse. On Friday, September 17, 1909, James W. Smith's riderless horse returned to the Smith plantation with a blood-splotched saddle. Smith had last been known to be in the swampy area of Chowder Springs, where his bull pastures were located. Smith, a prosperous and well-known local planner, was also known for having 200-plus head of breed bulls pastured in Chowder Springs. His horse first showed up at Harrison Gordon's cabin on the plantation. Gordon initially assumed that Smith was spending the night at a neighbor's and the horse had just pulled loose. When he failed to show up looking for the horse, Gordon took the horse to Smith's home and the blood on the saddle was discovered. Concern grew that Smith had been gored by one of his bulls. So a search was organized and sent into the swamp to search for him. It was common knowledge that Smith was not on friendly terms with the black men who lived near his bull farm. The search party started out on Saturday, September 18th, to search for Smith. They asked some of the local men of the Chowder Springs community if they had seen Smith in the area or at his bull farm. It is unclear if they directed the men to Smith as later they would be arrested and held as accessories to Smith's murder. Smith's body was found in the late afternoon, buried in a shallow grave along a swamp levee. Since his hand and arm were above the soil and his legs broken so that they would fit into the short, narrow grave, it was deduced that Smith had been hurriedly buried at night. The body was then transferred to Gunter Brothers in downtown Columbus in today's Hollyhocks, shop where an inquest was held in their undertaking room. Smith was then buried in Friendship Cemetery on that Sunday. Back in Chowder Springs, Sheriff Ryland Prowell, Constables Jim Lance and J.W. Shackelford, and some citizens did some, quote, detective work. They searched the local community's cabins and found blood-spattered overalls, a gun, a spade, an axe, and a pair of shoes, with blood on them. Henry Betts, Reese Betts, Jim Bradley, Joe Colvin, John Field, Harrison Gordon, and Hunter Sweetie were all taken into custody. The spade and shoes were found at Henry Betts' home, and the gun, axe, and blood-spattered overalls were discovered at Bradley's home. Smith was allegedly shot with number six shot, a gun that matched that caliber and some shells were found in Bradley's cabin. Bradley, Reese Betts, and Henry Betts were all bound over and told their case was going straight to a grand jury. There was such an uproar in town demanding the lynching of the three men that the sheriff reached out to the governor for support. The Columbus riflemen were called to arms, and the West Point Guard was put on alert. The men were moved to Meridian for safekeeping and the Lauderdale County Prison to prevent a lynching so that a trial could actually be held. Henry Betts was held on a $25,000 bond. He implicated W.S. Mustin, a white liveryman, in the murder initially. Betts, even though convicted and sentenced to hang, was held in the jail to testify at Mustin's trial. Reese Betts and Jim Bradley were told to leave town after they were cleared of any wrongdoing. They were warned to not even go home to their families first, as there were fa- as there were people who were waiting there and wanted to lynch the two men despite their innocence. Mustin was then found innocent, and Betts was ordered to be hanged. A scaffold was hurriedly built on the back porch of the Lowndes County Courthouse. A giant frame was built from which a large, heavy canvas curtain was hung to screen the scaffold from the school children at nearby Franklin Academy. Betts was then given fresh overalls and a chambray shirt and then taken to be hanged on the back porch of the Lowndes County Courthouse on February 11th, 1910. Betts was a large, tall man 
He was said to weigh well over 300 pounds and stood six feet, six inches tall. As the sheriff's deputy placed the noose around Bet's neck to drop the <clears throat> to drop him to the floor below, the actual board gave way. The deputy fell with Betts through the scaffold. The deputy fell unhurt to the ground below, but Betts spun and kicked and thrashed at the end of the rope, slowly suffocating, veins bulging on his neck and forehead, his frantic kicks slowing eventually. It took 15 minutes before he would finally be pronounced dead. Retired sheriff's deputies tell of a tall black man wearing old-fashioned bib overalls and a blue chambray shirt walking around behind the courthouse, pulling at his shirt throat over and over and over. His neck below each ear is rubbed raw as if he's had a, something tight around it that cut and scraped the flesh below into ugly wounds. When spoken to, this man looks at you and then slowly dissolves before your eyes. The only people ever recorded this seeing this apparition are always members of law enforcement. Deputies just tell each other, there goes Henry again. Apparently, with the latest re renovations to the back of the courthouse and the addition of handicapped parking places close to the back door, as well as the installation of the new ramp, Henry no longer seems to visit the courthouse grounds. Or maybe he's no longer visiting the deputies because they now park on the far side of the building and use the new front doors. Thank you for coming on the Tom Bigby Tales. Until next time.